Hi, this is Bruno Ordozoiti, and this is Insightful Dimensionality Reduction with Variable Rank Variable Subsets. This is joint work with Sajid Pai and Marta Kocinska. So let's start with a motivating example. We consider this matrix, which encodes how much user X is interested in topic Y. So our goal is to find sets of variables which are explained approximately by a single factor. For example, in this matrix, matrix it's obvious that sets of variables such as math or physics are explained by the underlying factor like physics, for instance, whereas the variables cars and motorbikes are likely to be explained by whether or not the user likes racing. However, we can consider larger sets of variables if we incorporate the topic engines into these sets. And to a lesser extent, the resulting sets are also explained by a single factor, although not so accurately. But still, we would be interested in having a method able to locate all of these sets and ideally quantify the extent to which they can be explained by a single factor. As another motivating example, we consider the case of survey data. So here we have a few questions from the European Social Survey, which is conducted every two years all across Europe to get a sense of what people think of certain social and political topics. So here we have uh, some uh, examples of real questions such as are immigrants good or bad for the country's economy? Do you think that the country's cultural life is enriched or undermined by immigrants and so on? So it's apparent that these questions are uh, driven by the same underlying factor, which is the attitude of the respondent towards immigration. However, there might be sets of variables which are also driven to a large extent by one single underlying factor, but which are not uh, so obvious. So it would be interesting to have an algorithm which is able to find these sets of questions. So let's see how we formalize this problem. Okay, informally our problem is this. Given a data set, we want to find groups of variables approximately explained by a single factor. For this, we define the concept of CRO. Uh, so this is, given a matrix A, we define its closeness to rank one, CRO, as written here. So this is the ratio between the square of the first singular value of the matrix and the square of the Frobenius norm. Remember that the Frobenius norm squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the singular values. So this ratio quantifies <coughs> the extent to which this matrix can be explained by the first singular vector. So if we go back to our initial example, we see that the sets that we discussed um, do indeed score reasonably high in this uh, CRO measure. So this indicates that it might be a good method for finding these types of sets. <coughs> but note that uh, methods such as clustering might be unsatisfactory because in this case we have, for example, uh, overlapping uh, variable subsets. And factorization methods such as PCA might be influenced by what's happening in the rest of the matrix. So it might not be easy to extract these sets from these matrix. So we uh, propose two problem formulations. The first one is given a matrix A and a number K, 
find the k-column subset with the largest CRO. And for this problem, which we show to be NP-hard, we give an algorithm achieving uh, quality guarantees with respect to the optimal uh, CRO, the optimal subset in the matrix. And this guarantee works when the columns of the input matrix are scaled to unit norm. And the next problem consists of finding, given a matrix and a threshold, the largest column subset with CRO at least this threshold. And we give an algorithm which outputs a subset guaranteed to have at least this CRO without explicitly computing it uh, in the subsets that are considered during the execution of the algorithm. And both algorithms are efficient and highly parallelizable. So finding CRO subsets is useful for other tasks, such as, for example, feature selection with quality guarantees by means of column subset selection. So more specifically, given a matrix with CRO at least one minus epsilon, we can show that there is a sub matrix of A comprised of R columns, which satisfies this inequality. That is, if we only store this sub matrix of A and we discard the rest of the columns, we can recover the discarded information with bounded error as given by this inequality. And this is based on known results for column subset selection. So as an example, if we find a matrix of 10 columns with a CRO equal to 0 0.9, we can store just two of these columns and approximate the rest of the matrix with error bounded by 15%. We give additional results in the paper, such as upper bounds on the CRO of the subsets of a matrix based on its singular value decomposition. We show that every n column matrix with CRO tau contains an n minus one column submatrix with at least uh, the same CRO. That is, you can always remove one column without uh, losing any CRO. We give some methods to compute and estimate the CRO of column pairs uh, quickly. And we analyze the stability of the CRO measure against perturbations. And in particular, we show that CRO is not very sensitive to noise and perturbations in the input matrix. So let's see some experiments. We propose some baselines based on methods from the literature. I should say that the problems as we formulate them have not been considered before in the literature, as far as we know. So we take methods uh, designed to optimize related or similar problems, and we adapt them to tackle our problems. And we consider a variety of data sets, uh, different sizes and dimensionality. So first, we simply find, using each of these algorithms, the best CRO subset of size k, or different values of k, and we report the result. Um, uh, our method is always the best in terms of the, the CRO of the subset it finds. And we also report the running time, and our method is usually the fastest or close to the fastest. In this experiment, we, uh, instead of find, finding just one single subset, 
we find many. What we do is we find the best uh, subset for a given value of k. We remove remove the corresponding columns from the data set and then we find another one and so on. And we repeat this process until we have found a predetermined number of subsets. And here we report the CRO of the successive subsets that we find. And we show that our method is much more stable than the alternative. In some cases, the CRO uh, of the subsets found by the alternative are actually quite high as well. But the numbers themselves are not so important as this might depend on uh, the distribution of the data and so on. So what's important is uh, which method is better and which method is more stable. Here we test the potential of uh, these methods for dimensionality reduction and feature selection. So we perform a task similar to what I described befo before. What we do is find uh, subsets with high CRO of different sizes and then we try to choose a small number of columns of those subsets so that we can predict the discarded columns and here we report the error achieved by different methods and ours is usually the better one although the 3D baseline that we propose GCSS is also quite effective in some cases. And finally, we test the scalability of the method. We consider a fairly high dimensional data set. And we proceed as follows. So running our algorithms on this data set can actually be a little bit challenging because we, what the algorithms do is build CRO subsets readily is start, starting from each of the columns of the data set. So what we do is sample columns of the data set uh, and use them as initial points. And the insight here is that in order to find uh, one of these subsets, it should be enough to consider one of the columns it contains. Or at least if you start from one of those columns, you should be able to find a similar subset. So sampling a subset of the columns of the matrix should be enough to get good results. And here we show that indeed by sampling uh, about 15 or 20%, in some cases, this seems to be enough to achieve uh, good results. Finally, we show a case study. So we consider data from the European Social Survey I mentioned before, and we consider questions related to trust in politicians and institutions. Some of these questions concern national institutions and some concern European institutions. In the case of the countries on the left, they seem to regard uh, the problem of trust in institutions, either national or European, as the same thing. These answers seem to be driven by the same factor. But this is not the case of the countries on the right, which uh, do not include the question of trust in the European Parliament in the same CRO subset. So to conclude, we have formalized the problem of finding variables uh, driven by a single factor as two combinatorial problems. We have given efficient algorithms with guarantees and we have shown their effectiveness and potential for insight in experiments. Thank you.